Right, so in the previous video, I spoke about webhooks and what kind of problems they solved. In short, it's essentially server to server communication where one server notifies another by sending in an HTTP request. It's pretty common in APIs and third party services, but that's one way of communication. So imagine if you have three services and you want to perform some action in service two and service three when something happens in service one. You'll configure the webhooks in this service one which is essentially going to be a POST request available on service two and service three. So it's one way communication from service one to these other two services. These two services, service two and service three, can't send anything back to the service one. So this is one directional communication between servers. Now there's also WebSockets, which is essentially full duplex communication between a client and a server, allowing both of them to send messages at any time. You normally see this in chat related applications or cross collaboration applications like Figma, but in some use cases, opening up a two way connection is an overkill. So for example, say you are building a stock market tracking app, the central server that handles real time data should send the client updates without the client ever asking for it. All the client or the front end for this app, all it has to do is listen for updates from this server without ever making a single request to this server. So there's no need of a two way connection. And that's where SSEs or server sent events come into play. As the name suggests, there will still be a connection between the client and the server, but events will only be sent from the server. So you can think of WebSockets as a phone conversation where both parties are allowed to share things and SSE would be like a radio broadcast where there's only one sender or a transmitter and there are several receivers who can't really send anything back. So like I mentioned, stock price trading or live sport score updates in these scenarios, SSEs would make more sense than WebSockets because there's no need for the client to send messages to the backend. So that's what SSEs do. Let's quickly look at an example. What I'll do is I'll set up a react app and a node.js server for this example. Let me create a directory and I'll call it SSE demo inside this directory. I'll create a new node.js project and I'll also install express. We'll also need cores for this particular example because we want to enable cross origin requests from the front end. So along with express, I'll install cores. Let me also open up this project. Now inside here, let me create a server.js file, which is essentially going to host our server related code. And I'll simply copy this simple boilerplate express server. So if you see here, we have a single get request here. The moment I make a request to this endpoint from the front end, the server will send a bunch of headers in the response. So you see that we have these three headers. The first one defines the response as an event stream. We do not want to cache anything to ensure real time updates. So we use this header. And finally, we want the connection to stay open indefinitely. So we use this third header. Finally, we have the set interval here, which is essentially going to send a message back to the front end every second. And if you look at this message, it's basically sending in the current time. So that's it for this node server. Now let's create the front end as well. So let's run weed. I'll call it SSE client. I'll be using react and let's go with TypeScript. Let's go inside this folder and install the dependencies. Okay. We have all the dependencies in our project. Let me go inside the app file and here what I'll do is I'll simply replace this entire thing with this. So in here we have a simple state that keeps track of the time that we are going to get from the backend. So we are going to use the event source class to make a connection to this backend. And if you look at it, it's essentially pointing to the same endpoint that we have defined in our node.js server. Here we have a listener that listens for any event from the backend. And anytime we get an event, we are extracting the data and we are setting the state that we have over here. So whatever time we get from the backend, we are just simply setting it here. At the end, when the component unmounts, we are getting rid of this event source because it's an open connection between the front end and the back end. Whatever data we store inside this state, we simply display it as part of this JSX. So let me open up the terminal. I'll open up one more terminal. So in the first one, let me just run the node server. 
and inside the second one i'll run our front end app so if i go inside the browser you'll see that we get the current time and it's continuously updating every second so if i open up the network tab let me zoom in a little bit let me reload this app because i want to show you the events request yeah you see here that this is the same request that we have created inside our node.js app and you have this event stream option here so if i click on it you'll see that we get events on a timely basis so every second we are getting a new event with this updated time so this is how sses work we essentially send events from the backend to the frontend without the frontend ever making a request to the server so to summarize you should be using server sent events if you only need one way communication from the server to the client if you want something simpler a lightweight alternative to web sockets and you don't need any bidirectional messaging if your application use case falls under any one of these three scenarios then server sent events would make more sense for you if you do need bidirectional communication though you should go with web sockets so yeah that's pretty much it this was a short one i briefly mentioned server sent events in the previous video so i thought it's better to quickly summarize it in a short video if you have any other suggestions to put them in the comments and i'll try to create a video around it if you're new here do subscribe to the channel and i'll see you in the next one